When Elon Musk's SpaceX entered the rocket venture, he promised reusable rockets, lower launch costs, and easier access to space. The company has made steady progress toward fulfilling that promise over the last few years, thanks in large part to the success of its Falcon 9 rocket. Today, we are back with another most interesting topic of the SpaceX industry. We are highlighting how SpaceX build their rockets so fast. Excited to know about this, right? Let's find out. If we say, how desperately does Elon Musk want to visit Mars? Expect me to tell you a story. On Sunday, February 23rd, Musk convened an all-hands meeting at SpaceX's South Texas facility where the Starship spacecraft is being built. It was 1 a.m. At a time where most Americans were firing their final shots before the clock hit 12, Musk assembled his team to work on The Office before it leaves Netflix. He was curious as to why Starship Factory wasn't running around the clock. Why weren't steel sheets welded into domes and fuel tanks? Why weren't tanks stacked into rockets? Why weren't things moving as quickly as he wanted? Musk is always looking for a faster way to get there. He will not live forever and the funds may run out. He is aware of this. Musk does not know when the window for spreading humanity to Mars will close. So he has to get there before the window closes. His starry engineers and technicians responded that in order to really accelerate, they needed enough employees to assign workers to specific stations with the burgeoning factory, allowing each person to specialize. This would necessitate a much larger number of hands capable of building things. Musk informed his team members that a recruitment meeting would be held 12 hours later at 1 p.m. on Sunday. They'd have another one on Monday at 1 p.m., followed by another at 8 p.m., Long lines of family and friends, mostly from the area, formed. Cars and trucks were clogging the roadside all the way up and down Boca Chica Highway. SpaceX was still hiring as of 11 p.m. on Monday. On that Sunday and Monday, the company added 252 people to its South Texas launch site. It instantly doubled the workforce to more than 500 employees. The majority of new hires, including those who signed contracts at midnight, were told to report for work the next morning. Outside of the headquarters in Hawthorne, California, the Texas factory will most likely be SpaceX's largest location. SpaceX has built a small city down here near the Rio Grande River in just a few weeks. It's all rather amazing. And maybe, just maybe, this new Muskville will serve as a launch pad for Mars' first city. Musk had hoped to reach Mars by 2010, but it took six years just to get the one rocket into orbit. On September 28, 2008, a SpaceX Falcon 1 orbited Earth for the first time. This paved the way for the Falcon 9, a nine-engine version of the rocket that has been the company's workhorse since its debut in 2010. The Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket designed to put satellites and eventually crewed spacecraft into orbit. It stands 69.9 meters tall, weighs 549.054 kgs, and has a takeoff thrust of 7,607 kilonewtons, which can propel 22,800 kgs into orbit around the Earth. It could also send 8,300 kilograms to Mars, though it has not yet launched anything to the Red Planet. Nonetheless, Mars is SpaceX's ultimate goal. Elon Musk has made no secret of his desire to be the first to land humans on our neighboring planet. Meanwhile, SpaceX has launched more than 40 Falcon 9 missions into Earth orbit. The rocket made history in 2012, when it became the first privately launched vehicle to successfully launch a resupply mission to the International Space Station, and has since gained reusability. This is another step towards SpaceX's goal of sending humans into orbit from American soil, which hasn't happened since the Space Shuttle's final flight in 2011. But, for the time being, it isn't just about NASA's mission. The US Air Force, national security missions, and commercial satellite launches are among the clients listed on SpaceX's launch manifest. It also upgraded the liquid nitrogen storage system, which is used to fill the rocket's tanks before launch, as well as electronic components, power, and plumbing lines. The landing of the first stage onto a floating barge may be the most exciting part of any Falcon 9 launch. The first stage of the Falcon 9 is equipped with four small carbon fiber landing legs that are stowed flat against the fuselage. The first stage of the rocket begins its ascent through the atmosphere after passing through staging. Cold gas thrusters near the rocket's apex turn it upright. 
Speaking of Space Dragon, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft has delivered cargo to the International Space Station, and on May 31st, 2020, its Crew Dragon became the first commercial spacecraft to deliver astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley to the International Space Station. Dragon was also the first commercial spacecraft to be recovered after being launched into orbit. NASA chose Crew Dragon, along with Boeing's Starliner, to be the first spacecraft to transport astronauts into the International Space Station since the end of the shuttle program. In April 2019, an unoccupied Crew Dragon exploded during a ground test due to a leak in the pressurization system, causing the initiative to suffer a setback. SpaceX drew a lot of attention in February 2018 when it launched Falcon Heavy, the most powerful rocket launched from the United States since the Saturn V which sent astronauts to the moon. The massive launch system, which consisted of three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, sent a test payload consisting of Musk's personal red Tesla Roadster in the direction of Mars. The Falcon Heavy's second launch occurred on April 11, 2019, and was followed by the first successful landing of all three-stage rocket cores. On June 25, 2019, SpaceX conducted a third Falcon Heavy launch, taking reusability a step further by catching the payload, faring with a ship outfitted with a massive net. Starman, on the other hand, finally made a close pass by Mars in October 2020. Musk presented his plans for a large city on Mars at two International Aeronautical Congress meetings, but he is yet to provide many details about the life on Mars. He stated that SpaceX's primary goal is to provide transportation while leaving others to worry about infrastructure. Also, Elon Musk has compared single-use rockets to single-use planes. If an airline had to strap a Boeing 747 after each flight, flying would become prohibitively expensive for the average traveler. Aeroplanes, on the other hand, are not single-use. They are refueled for another flight. If a rocket can be refueled in the same way, the enormous cost of spaceflight could be reduced to a fraction. A high production rate equates to a high iteration rate. For almost any technology, progress is determined by the number of iterations and the amount of progress made between each iteration. When you have a high production rate, you have a lot of iterations. You can advance from one to the next. None of this is inexpensive. Boca Chica is a relatively remote location for delivering materials, and the company has moved at a breakneck pace, cutting no corners. This is a lot on rockets. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and push the bell icon there so you never miss out on a video. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.